Do you know what today is? It's my anniversary. It's my anniversary. <laughs> so if I wasn't celebrating my three year anniversary of being a flight attendant, pretty sure I'd be a singer somewhere. it is my three year anniversary of being a flight attendant so this video i'm going to recap three years for you uh three years as a flight attendant is a bit surprising to me i didn't i don't know how long i expected myself to be here but what i will say is this is the longest job i've held so uh that's pretty cool a common question that i get from people is like oh like how long do you plan on doing that I don't think people realize like this is a real career like I have health benefits I have dental I have vision I have a 401k I have vacation this is a real job um so yeah I don't know how long I plan to be here but it could very well be a lifelong career another question I get is do you like your job what I will say is I like the lifestyle that my job has afforded me. I'm able to have a super flexible schedule. I'm able to get paid to see the world. On my off days, I'm still able to see the world. And more importantly, I'm able to take my parents along on the journey with me. Uh, if you all remember back in November, I took my mom to Australia. I don't think I could do that with any of the other jobs that I held. Um, or if I did, it at least wouldn't be as affordable as it was when we went um, as a result of me being a flight attendant. I've had some crazy flights. I've had some smooth flights. Uh, people passed out on flights. I've had passengers cuss me out. I've had passengers get into altercations with each other. I've even had a passenger assault me, which was not a good day, but it happened. Um, I've had passengers throw up. I've had it all, but the common question I get anytime I tell people I'm a flight attendant is, what is your craziest flight? And y'all, my craziest flight actually happened during my first six months of being a flight attendant, like before I was even off probation. At this time, I was based in Miami, and I'm gonna tell y'all a story. Let me preface it by saying this is not the Soldier Boy Challenge. This is like real. This might sound like the Soldier Boy Challenge, but y'all, this is real. Okay, so we're in Miami, we're taxiing. I am working in main cabin, so I'm in the back of the plane, uh, getting ready for takeoff, like I'm in my jump seat. And the, uh, the phone rings, like it chimes. So we pick up like, hey, and it's one of the flight attendants up front. He's like, hey, there's a lady sitting in the exit row. Um, she's annoyed that the guy next to her keeps texting she doesn't feel comfortable she's saying that she wants to get off of the plane like all of this stuff so the captain is like okay like she sounds nuts um we're just gonna like let her get off because it, the mindset is if somebody is nutty on the ground they're gonna be even worse in the air like i don't know something about the altitude kind of does something to people makes me even crazier than they were so we're like, okay, like, let's just get her off. Like, you know, we don't want to deal with it. We'll just let her get off. So we're taxiing back to the gate. But like, if you're getting ready for takeoff and then you decide like, oh no, we're going to go back to the airport. Some people got to be called and it can take a while for it to happen because things kind of go in an order. Like it's not our turn to be back at the gate in Miami. So we have to wait a bit. So we're taxiing, we're going slow, but we're getting there. This lady decides we're not going fast enough for her. So she starts ringing her call, like, ding, 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 ding. And the guy, she's in the middle seat, and the guys that she's referring to, they're sitting on the um, aisle in the window. And she's like, I want to get off. They just came back from the Middle East, and they probably have... Probably have a bomb. Woosa, 
okay, so we have to relay this information to the captain because, I mean, in my mind, I'm like, yo, this lady's tripping, but what if she's not, you know? So I'm like, all right, like we have to relay this information to the captain. So we tell the captain, we feel the plane make like this big U-turn. And like, you can feel the plane make a U-turn. We feel it make a U-turn. And um, he's like, okay. So we like are taxiing around Miami airport, like way, way, way out. Like far from the airport, we're still on the tarmac. But like, we don't see any other planes. It's just like us. And we're just like cruising along. We're not hearing much. So now passengers are like, yo, like what's going on? Are we taking off? And I'm just like, oh yeah, like it's fine. Like, you know, just everybody calm down because no one else really heard her drop the B word. So, um, after like 15, 20 minutes of just like driving or taxi, um, a passenger rings their call like, oh, let me, y'all, we're going to Guatemala. So it's like church groups and school groups going on mission trips to build homes and orphanages and stuff like that. So that's the demographic of our passengers. So everyone is like going for service and like on a mission, you know, and they look out of the window and they're like, hey, uh, why is the plane surrounded by fire trucks and ambulance? And then I look out I'm like, oh, I don't know. Didn't know that was the case. Okay. So yeah, so then at that point, I kind of start internally freaking out. So I like go to the back of the plane. I'm like texting my mom like, OMG, this lady just said she thinks somebody has a bomb. And now the plane is surrounded by fire trucks and ambulance. Like, you know, now I'm kind of like in my like dramatic mode. And my mom, being the most calm, level-headed person she is, texts back like, I don't have any feelings of despair, Ash. You'll be fine. And I'm just like, yo, what? But okay, whatever. So then the captain calls and he's like, hey, um, they're coming on. So we think, well, I think at least, that he means like two, maybe three um, law enforcement officials to get this lady off. She wants to be off. We want her off at this point. Something like, you know, two, three uniformed officials are going to come get her off. We're like, okay. So he tells us, you know, disarm your doors. They're coming on. So we're like, okay. Again, I'm in the back of the aircraft and we're on a 737. So there's about 30 rows of seats, give or take. And I'm all the way in the back. I'm standing in the middle, like in the aisle, but in the back. So in the back galley, but to where I can look straight up the aisle because I want to see what goes down when they take this lady off the plane. So I'm like, all right, like, let me stand here and watch. Next thing I know, y'all, I'm standing there, right, to watch, to be nosy, to get the tea. Out of nowhere, everybody put your hands up. SWAT team, full um, gear, assault rifles, pointing down the center aisle of the plane. And here I am standing right in the middle. My hands shoot up. And they proceed to evacuate the plane one row at a time, pointing guns at people. And there were about 10 of them. And when I say like full gear, I mean like full military combat, like it's about to go down type gear. These huge guns, like put your effing hands up. And I'm just like, oh, like shaking at this point. The flight attendant that's next to me, she is like about to pee her pants. We are literally going through it. When I tell y'all this was the longest amount of time in my life, I'm like, yo, how long does it take to get back to the plane? They're literally going row by row. You got people that think it's a game, that want to move slow. They were not hesitant to point that gun and remind them this is not a game. Get off this plane. Like just the craziest thing that I have ever seen. So by the time they get to the back of the plane, I have like tears in my eyes, my hands are up, I'm doing my very best not to make any sudden moves. I'm praying that my phone don't vibrate, nothing. Um, we all know what happens to black people if they make some sudden movement. So I'm doing my best to stay still. I have no clue what these people are thinking. I don't know what, you know, I, I don't know. But I'm just like, yo, I'm here whatever y'all want like just tell me i will do it no sudden moves so then once they get everyone off the plane and we're still standing in the back the two two flight attendants do you know 
Look at Swan Dude puts his gun down and gives me a hug and goes, I'm sorry about that. What? Crazy, mind blown. But anyway, so then we get off the plane and again, we're like out in the middle of nowhere at the airport and there's like all these vans and buses to come pick up passengers, but there's no one there to accommodate the flight attendants. Like no one, we're sitting there like, okay, where do we go? Who do we call? What do we do? So finally, one of the flight attendants calls over to the airport like, hey, we need a manager out here. Like, you know, this just happened. So finally management comes, they shuttle us back to the airport and they're like, okay, like, you know, we're gonna taxi the plane over to this gate. Um, they did a sweep of it, you know, obviously they didn't find anything. Um, so yeah, they're gonna taxi it over to the gate, get a new departure time and uh, you still wanna work? It was at that moment while I was still on probation that I realized as sweet as this job is, company don't care about me. <laughs> But anyway, so of course I declined working um, and we were able to get removed from the trip with pay, rightfully so. But after that, you know, all of our stuff was still in the plane. So we had to go back on the plane to get our belongings. It literally looked like, like a war zone. Like everyone had to drop everything where they were. So like people's cell phones, people's purses, like everything. Because again, imagine like, you know, you're sitting on a plane, you're chilling, you're waiting like, oh, this is annoying. We're stuck in it out of nowhere put your effing hands up, everything you have drops. And then they evacuate the plane row by row, make people put their hands on top of their head when they left. So no one could grab anything. So everything is just everywhere on the plane. We grab our bags, we go. I couldn't get a flight to Cleveland that night. I guess it was like too late. So I ended up just going to Atlanta. Um, and then the next day I had to fly back to Miami to do like a, uh, like a traumatic experience debrief. It was just a mess. Um, what I will say really bothers me to this day is I have no idea what happened to the lady. And people are always like, oh, like, so what happened to the lady? That is a gift and a curse about this job. I don't take any of my work home with me, but when I have situations like this, I would love to know the follow-up and what happened. But uh, fortunately, I don't. Uh, the other crazy thing about this experience, that was my personal experience and a very similar experience for the other flight attendant that was in the back of the aircraft with me. However, the two flight attendants up front, they said as soon as the aircraft door opened, they got snatched off of the plane like as if it was a movie. Like they just got like snatched off, like snatched off to safety basically. So they didn't have to watch everyone get evacuated with these big guns and all of that stuff and stand there with their hands up. They got snatched off immediately. And then as far as the cockpit goes, they had no clue what was going on because they were still in the flight deck. <laughs> so yeah, that happened afterwards. Um, my manager did finally reach out, finally. Uh, and it was more so like, you know, please don't go. Like you're still on probation, you're new. I don't want this to freak you out, blah, blah, blah. Like all this stuff. Um, but yeah, y'all, that was, that is my craziest flight. I don't think it could ever get any crazier. I hope it never gets any crazier. Uh, but yeah, so three years has been quite a ride. And um, yeah, I, I, I'm enjoying it. I, I really am. I'm enjoying the lifestyle. Again, it's a customer service job. Yes, it is safety oriented and safety is the main thing of my job. But luckily, I don't have to perform the safety functions of my job every day. Um, so it is mainly just a customer service job. And with that, you know, there are good days and there are bad days. But while I have y'all, let me show y'all something so funny. I've never like posted this or shown anyone. This is my graduation picture from flight attendant training. Um, reason I never posted this picture is because they airbrushed my face so much, like, so much. It looks like I'm on so much makeup, but like I did it. They just airbrushed it. And then also, training was six and a half weeks in Dallas, unpaid. So um, yeah, I kind of slacked on getting my eyebrows done. So I don't think it's the best picture of me. Uh, but yeah, this is my flight attendant graduation picture. Three years in. Um, so yeah, kudos to me and kudos to the rest of class 1603. Uh, we've made it three years. I think we may have lost a couple people along the way, uh, but for the most part, the bulk of us are all here. Uh, thank you all so much for tuning in. Please follow me on Instagram at do it while you can. 
follow me on Facebook, do it while you can. And then also feel free to follow me on Twitter if you want. Uh, my Twitter name is Ashley Denise and my Twitter is full of rap lyrics and anti-Trump tweets. So please don't go in there and get offended. And lastly, if you like the shirt that I have on, it is available for pre-order on AshleyDenise.com. Uh, so head over there, order a shirt, and the first 25 customers will also receive a free gift with their purchase. Thanks, guys. It was fun checking in, and I'll talk to y'all soon.